You're listening to Castrol CarCast on Podcast One. Well, we got a great show for you guys playing. We uh, started a little shaky, but man, does it pay off. (laughs) Boy, does it pay off. (laughs) Man, the sound of those cars. Oh, we got some great sounds. So we're going to start off a little shaky, but then we're going to pay it off big time. I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, driving an Infinity and Ford Explorers and traveling. It's going to be fun. But we take a deep dive into that Shelby Museum. First, let me tell you about Continental O-E-T-S. You can find... Weird things in your cars, not just uh, petrified French fries or melted crayons. There's live snakes. uh, There's bizarre trinkets, stuff that makes you wonder about folks. You also can find Continental Belts. Bet you didn't know that they're the OE for millions of Chrysler, Dodge, Ford, BMW, VW, and GM vehicles. Continental is launching the aftermarket multi-V belt. With the OE pedigree. So it's the good OE stuff, and you don't have to get it from the dealership. Their OE technology series, fanatically engineered for the perfect fit, form, and function for 98% of vehicles on the road in the U.S. and in Canada. And in Canada, I should say, Continental OE Technology Series Multi-V Belt. The belt with the OE pedigree. And get the full story at OE Technology Series. Dot com and away we go. For just twenty five dollars, you get wine and gifts. Ace's favorite stuff or products from ACS. Every single month, you get the drink you choose. It's hard to beat cool stuff and booze. Adam's monthly nut. You heard Dick. It's time for the second month of Adam's Monthly Nut. This month's shipment includes a three pack of Gringo Bandito hot sauces from Offsprings, Dexter Holland, a pack of Herb and Lou's frozen ice cubes, one of Adam Carolla's unprepared balls, and of course, a bottle of your choice. This $60 value is yours for only $25. Sign up for one month or keep the shipments coming. So prep your mails box and get ready for Adam's Monthly Nut. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. Just what going on. Get it on. Welcome to Castro Car Cast, brought to you by J.B. Weld. Um, Adam Carolla, it's Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea, over Hello. there. What's going on, man? Oh, traveling, driving cars. Mm-hmm. Portland for my first time ever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. During go- Pride Week, it was a little weird. I'm going back to uh, <laughs> Portland on uh, July 19th, 20th, doing stand-up there. Also got me some, uh, went to the Shelby Museum, so there's a yeah. lot to talk about there. I don't know if, um, I don't know if Max Zapata has any of that stuff, but anyway. J.B. Weld, made in the USA, pros and DIYers, trusted J.B. Weld for more than 50 years. We use it here, we use it at home, we use it in the garage, we use it in the studio, and it's available at J.B. Weld. Dot com and Home Depot and Lowe's and AutoZone, Advance Auto Parts and all that stuff. J.B. Weld. Yeah, we went out uh, to Denver last weekend. We swung by Boulder, and we went by the Shelby Museum. You which say is, Shelby Museum, but what's the affiliation with Shelby people or Shelby I don't think companies? it's anything official, but it is uh, 10,000 feet packed full of the coolest they Cobras. They got the good stuff, which is what you were telling me. They have the me. real good stuff. <laughs> they have the real good stuff. They have the Daytona. There at Brock's Daytona, they have tons of race history Cobras. They have uh, GT40s. They have Ken Miles GT40 there that it got gypped out of uh, Le Mans. And they have everything there. And it is quite a treat, a- along with like cool pictures and memorabilia and you know, team pictures and, you know, Ken Miles, the uh, official Shelby, you know, uh, work jacket and all that kind of stuff. So just everything is there and and I mean everything is I'm there. so fascinated by this because it's a small museum not owned by anybody officially Shelby 
and got to be the most well-funded little collection ever. Like, I don't know who, where this money's coming from, but these cars are not inexpensive. Everything you were talking to me about on this list is big money, big money cars. I was just thinking, I couldn't, I can't imagine a place where per square foot, like the amount of value, <laughs> yeah, than than this. Yeah, it's 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 undamn believable. Uh, and 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 the curator's great, Bill, and he fired up some of the cars. And nice. I don't know, do we have any of that footage or any? I talked I talked to Nate this morning about it. We uh, it's but still... he doesn't know what you're. We, I, I was at the other shop, and I'm like. Where has anyone seen the footage from the Shelby Museum? Yeah. And they're like, no. And I'm like, we don't have the Shelby. We don't have any of the Shelby stuff that Chris shot. Oh, the stuff Chris shot. <laughs> so that's a no. Then, yeah, they didn't well, see it. Yet. No, but stop saying no all the time. <laughs> Everyone stop saying no. What do you mean? No, there's only Chris. The, yes. there's. Oh, do I have to add the stuff that Chris shot? I, I don't like, think you, oh, they the know what they knew. I was going there to film the, the stuff Chris shot. Yeah, that's on, that's in that's on the entry hall there. Okay, stop saying no. Yeah. Stop saying no. Sitting, I have to go over there like hard constantly. Drive. Go. Where is it? What's going on? What's going on? Where is it? Why don't we have any of that stuff? What's it been? It's been a few days. Yeah. Now I'm sad. Why don't we have it. footage of <laughs> of the Daytona firing up? Because why? I, I don't know why, but I called them. I called them, and I said, "Look, we're going to need this sooner than later." So they're they're working on it. Do they? Do you want to see it? Of course, I want to see it. Do you want it for our audience? I would love our audience <laughs> to have it. Did you shoot it? It's on a stick or a drive or what's it on? I did. I did shoot it, but then uh, the mics were on a different thing, so they have to sync it up and and do all that with right. the editing. Did you tell them, "Hey, we just like that part about the guy firing up the Daytona"? I didn't tell them that. No. Okay. They know we do. I just podcasts. I was just calling to see how the videos were coming because they they edit it all and they they whack it up. Yeah, so. we yeah, do shows I, here every week. I know, but okay. <laughs> I, there's a. I'm trying to get rid of the casual approach to everything. Like, yeah. well, they got it. Well, they haven't gotten back to us, or I don't know what they've done. Why don't you tell them right now? Hey, I want the guys firing up the Daytona. Could we have that? Okay. Wouldn't that be cool? Would yeah. you like to see that? I would love to see that. Well, perhaps you'd tell them well, yesterday that you'd like to see that. Okay. Well, do you want to see it? Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, I'd love to see it again. <laughs> well, do you think the people <laughs> listening to this program yeah. would enjoy seeing a $40 million car fired up? Yeah. I, 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 we're going to post it all once it's ready. We're, we're whacking them up into really nice videos, and we're going to put them online everywhere. And Okay. Now, so I it's going to happen. I get it'll happen one day. I want to see it. <laughs> I'd like, uh, I want to see it. You'll I, see it, Matt. <laughs> okay. I'd like to see it as I'd like I'd like Matt to comment on it. How about that? And That's I'd fair. like to be next to him when he comments. All okay. right. Do you, what's on my screen? Do you want me to do that, or is that something from before? Okay. The problem with the screen, Max Pat, is it, it, unless we got a process of getting rid of the stuff that's on the screen, it'll it it makes me think we need to do it. Okay. So. This should be pretty easy, I think, because we just went and shot it. Yeah. And um, I think we should grab a snippet of that. We fired up. Coming soon, video. He fired up uh, a $40 million Daytona that, like, won, Le- won its class at Le Mans. I think won its class at Daytona, yeah. maybe even Sebring, too. So that Shelby Pete Brock built Daytona is there and he fired it up and he also fired up one of the first Ford GT forties built the one that they had six weeks to fix for Mm -hmm. Le Mans. I think the one that won Le Mans. Now he has the GT 40 race cars and street cars there. He's have a street car there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a GT 40 street car. I think they made seven of those or something. Um, He has the Ken miles GT 40 that technically won Le Mans he has the one that came in third place, the gold one. I don't mm-hmm. know if that's like a Holman Moody car or not. And then he has, I think, two of the first GT40s that were given to Shelby when Ford took them away from John Wire or wh- whomever yeah. gave them to Shelby and said, you got six weeks to get these things ready for Le Mans. Now, the gold one was... This is the gold one, the one that was at RM that we covered in uh, an episode of Going Racing? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. 
And they have the other sold at Monterey for like thirteen million bucks or yeah. twelve million bucks or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then uh, also they have speaking of well funded, they have Shelby's first Cobra. Yes, which we also saw in Monterey, and that sold for a few years ago. I think it sold for about thirteen or fourteen or something, yeah, some, somewhere. somewhere in that that range. So it's quite. Uh, it's, Ooh, now I don't know if that was hammer or with the vig. It's uh, it's quite it's quite there. I got a bunch of talking points from Max Zapata talking about the GT40 Mark II and the GT40 oldest GT40 first GT40 to win a race, the uh, Daytona Continental, which is I think used to be the 24 Hours, and we got the coupe and we got we got it all on here. So now we just need to get the the sound of the thing firing up because I think that would be cool for you guys to uh, enjoy. All right, what are you driving? What are you doing? Oh man, all kinds of great stuff. Uh, right now, I'm in the uh, I'm in an Infinity Q60 Red Sport 400, and I like this car a lot. And we've been talking to uh, Infinity and Nissan did some stuff with them recently, and I just feel like this car kind of goes under the radar. I think people think of luxury coupes, and they think a lot of maybe. S5, Audi, and BMW 4 Series, and you don't really give a lot of attention to the Infiniti, and this car is nice. This car is dialed in well. Like, it's one of the cars that has the electric steering dialed in well, and it has 400 horsepower, uh, you know, a twin turbo, and it's all-wheel a, drive. It's got a great combo of a of a midnight blue with a ton of metallic in it yeah. and a bright red interior. And it it's looks funny awesome. because I, I saw another photo of like the gray one and the gray one just looks so plain and like it's a sexy car. It's a good looking car. And when you do get it in like this nice metallic blue with the red interior and which is a great option that they have, it, it's it's fantastic. It's like zero to sixty in four point four seconds. Uh, you know, this one has some the carbon all-wheel fiber. Drive it's all-wheel cool. drive. Now, the all-wheel drive makes it about 4,000 pounds, but it seems to scoot pretty good. And it, it's it's comfortable. It's a great luxury coupe. Yeah. Now, maybe I'm just biased because I'm sort of a Japanese car guy, but I feel like, you know, when you pay for Audi, when you pay for Mercedes, when you pay for BMW, you get a really nice automobile, but there's a small bit of that money that's going to the nameplate. Yeah. And so when you buy a Genesis, a Hyundai Genesis, yeah. the money's not going to the nameplate. The right. money's being deducted a little from the <laughs> nameplate. Yeah. And when you're talking about an Audi or even a Lexus, sometimes BMW, some percentage of the money's going to the Nameplate. So if you buy a fifty thousand dollar Infinity or fifty thousand dollar Mercedes or BMW, the Infinity is gonna be a fifty seven thousand dollar car and the Mercedes is gonna be a forty seven thousand dollar car. Mm-hmm. Like one's gonna go down just a little. No yeah. and I don't mean in terms mean- of like Bondari steel or something. It's like all the bells and the whistles and the little bits and the pieces. Yeah. Like they just have to, if, 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 if the infinity doesn't give you, or if the Hyundai doesn't give you a little more car for a little less price, then they're not going to sell one unit. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Because if everything is just equal, everything's just equal, you go, I'll take the Audi A7 all day long. If right. Everything's equal. But so they have to say, you get a little more of this and a little more of that and a little cheaper price. And they need to pull a certain amount of people over to their market. And I just feel like, take a look at the Infinity because they are working a little harder Yeah, because they have to have a little more product for the price. And, Does and that they make did, sense? Absolutely. And they did a great job with this car. It's got the flared fenders. It's got a good look to it. It's got great lines to it. A lot of personality in the sheet metal. And, uh, uh, and everything works. Like mm-hmm. so, Infinity's a little weird in that they're they're kind of slow in picking up like Apple CarPlay. Like it's still not in this model, but it has the two screens, the split screens, and a partnership with Intel. I believe it's Intel working on it, and so far, like it just has worked every single time I've gotten into it. 
you know, and and it doesn't have CarPlay, but it has the Bluetooth stuff, and so far it's just worked. Um, <laughs> and you have no idea how complicated that seems to be for everybody. The uh, there's also um, we got the new lineup of uh, comedians and cars. What season yes. are they on? Fifty oh. seven. Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. Right. I do have the lineup of guests for that. Comedians and cars getting coffees coming back. Am I in that? Uh, I I th- in that? You know, I think they ran out of time. Um, Max Pat, did you talk to one of the other, I mean, to one of the flunkies over at the uh, other shop there? I not only gave them what car I need to be fired up, but uh, the uh, the number uh, that that is on the car. I'm, I'm surprised they took your call. Yeah. <laughs> well, so. they fire up the GT40 as well. So. Hold on, Nate's calling me right now. All right. Okay, all right, here's the lineup. Here we got Eddie Murphy, mm-hmm. Seth Rogen, mm-hmm. Ricky Gervais, mm-hmm. Matthew Broderick, Jamie Foxx, Sebastian Maniscalco, Man- Manis- Stand up comedian. Okay. Martin Short. Uh-huh. Mario Joyner. Yeah. Melissa Villasenor. SNL. Okay. Bridget Everett and Barry Martyr. I, I, don't, I don't know who that is. Barry Martyr is his writing partner. I don't know who Bridget uh, Everett is. I don't know either. Is it? Are they on Netflix now? I think, I think Netflix they're on now. Netflix. I think yeah. they were. Yeah, they're on Netflix now. They were on uh, Crackle for a while. Oh, were and then they? I think they were on – that's the Sony deal. Mm-hmm. And then I think they were on like both. I think mm-hmm. they were on Crackle with new episodes and whatever. And then I think eventually they even end up on YouTube. I think he's just got a big distribution, different phases. Like after a certain amount of time, maybe it goes up on YouTube. But it's on Netflix now. All right. Anyway, um, we're getting prepped for Monterey. We're getting the 935 ready. I guess Sean fired it up the other day. Yeah, said it seemed to come up to temperature. By the way, anybody on that list sound like a car guy to you? Just wondering if, <laughs> if, if any of those names stand out as like a potential car. I know that's not really what the show is about, but does they anyone never... on there strike you as like, oh, I want to hear what Matthew Broderick has to say, and then also I want to hear what he owns. Oh, they never. That, that... They don't really do too much of that. It's not that kind of show, but. Well, no cars are that, no car shows are that kind of car show i mean even jay leno's garage you know like when he has somebody on his show oftentimes it's just like tyler perry's driving a new bentley right unless you're fluffy and you got a bunch of vans vw vans (laughs) it's funny the heaviest guy in show business has a car at the least horsepower (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the tidiest, <laughs> tidiest space ever. Now, the guy who does it right is David Spade. He weighs like 130 pounds, and he's got Mopar 440. Yeah, he's got Grand Nationals. <laughs> yeah, he got, he's got cars with a little more horsepower. Yeah. Uh, by the way, David Spade, I saw at a couple of like uh, Auctions America, like RM Auctions out here. Like, he was just, mm. you know, and uh, oddly enough, and Josh Brolin we saw in Monterey. I didn't know that he was a car guy. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, Apparently he is, or he just likes free cheese and wine. Well, either way, uh, there are some dudes out there, and uh, I'm one of them, and uh, (laughs) I'm not going to be on the show. (laughs) But uh, also... Are you a comedian, and do you drink coffee, and do you like cars? I would argue that if you put me in the passenger seat of whatever Jerry picked me up in, I would be funnier than most of those people that are picking up. (laughs) So let's forget about the car. First of all, you'd be talking about the car for the entire episode. I would know something about the cars. (laughs) All right. Any updates, Max Pata? What do we think? Uh, They're working on it. Are they rushing it right over? Yeah, they're getting it. Sure they are. All right. Okay. Uh, I talked to him about it. Day before yesterday or something. Ah, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, no, I didn't say I need those clips. I just went, "What's up with the stuff?" Like my you, whole you thing did, is uh, like, "Did you get this stuff?" And they did that run is around, the stuff? implying that <laughs> we're going into a week with shows, yeah. podcasts. Maybe well, I know yeah. Nate has a big webinar for the uh, uh, meme documentary and the sure, but he's today. got twenty people, right? He does ten, ten people. Yeah, well, someone's on vacation. Someone's <laughs> on vacation. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know. What do we... All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. I, I'm saying if you want me to talk, if you put it on my list to talk about, put it on your list to find. Well, I, get, I, I just wanted you to mention that you saw it and talk about what you... I, I, I put like a couple I of... I do, yes. I would definitely mention I saw it, but wouldn't it be cool to show Matt 30 seconds of the car firing up? That's of course. what I'm saying. If I'm talking about it, that's yeah. what I'm saying to everyone all the time. If you're going to talk about it, you might as well hear it, show it, see it, whatever. Okay. 
So uh, that's going well. What'd you do in Portland? Oh, man. Um, well, I did a lot of Oregon Portland stuff. You know, uh, I went out initially to um, uh, Ford brought me out to test drive new Ford Explorers, and it's such an important car for them. The Explorer was the first real SUV. It created the category. So similar to like an F-150, they have the means to invest into a vehicle like that substantially and make it good. So uh, we were at a lodge about 45 minutes or so outside of Portland, started there, picked us up at the airport, took, took me over there. And uh, and had uh, had a day planned where they said you can uh, we have explorers all over we have the two point three liter uh, EcoBoost four cylinder three hundred horsepower we have the the three sixty five EcoBoost uh, uh, three liter uh, six cylinder and we have the hybrid and then the ST which is a four hundred horsepower sport version. And we started off by just doing like an off road course. You mm-hmm. go up a hill, you hit, you hit the hill descent mode, and it goes down the hill all by itself, controls traction and mm-hmm. everything. And then you you get up on a real sl- uh, angle up on a hill, and it kind of has an angle meter in there to show you if you're 26, 28 degrees. You am go I, through the water. Am I <laughs> it's <neat>. right? <laughs> so back in the day, I had like a 93. 94, probably like a 94 Nissan Maxima with like leather and air and a V6. Yeah, and baller. I would always say to my friend or anybody, I'd go, you can get more car than this, but you don't really need more car than this mm-hmm. at the time. It's like at a pretty good V6 power plant and it was, it was nice and safe and like it worked nicely. Yeah. And it was like comfortable four door. Looked pretty good. And I was like, you can get a BMW 3 Series or 5 Series or you can get a Lexus or you can get a whatever, but you don't really need more than this car. I don't care how much money you make. This is a fine car. And I I feel with the Ford Explorer, like the new generation Ford Explorer, a caveat, all-wheel drive, not front-wheel drive. Like all-wheel drive. One of the big changes for this year is rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive. This is a significant change. I I don't want SUVs with front-wheel drive. They tried it. Nobody liked it. Everyone hates it. It's It's a bad idea. There's too much suspension travel. It it tows for shit. It doesn't work. It's no good. Okay, good. You give me a loaded Ford Explorer. Now, you may not get a lot of cred driving around Hollywood because right. people want to see a Land Rover, a Range, Ro- a Range Rover, whatever it is, or the Audi Q, whatever, yeah. or something. But do you need, no matter what your tax bracket is, you get a loaded Explorer all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive with the 400 horsepower and the whatever yeah. package. You don't need any more car, you don't. do you? If you wanted to, you step up to the Lincoln Aviator, right? Mm-hmm. And then look at the sales numbers of Explorer to Aviator, and that pretty much makes your point. Um, but these work great. And there's so many different trim levels. You can get it pretty basic, and then you can load it all up to limited or platinum and get all the fancy stuff in it. And it's got all the stuff you want, right? Like it's got two different size screens depending on your options. It's got CarPlay. You can plug in your phone, and there's just a charging pad. So if you just want to throw your, your, your phone on the center console and just drive real quick and not worry about plugging in or calls or anything, it just charges it. Just what, is right. the, what is the loaded up version of that car cost? Uh, I'll, I'll, yeah. let you, I'll let you I research have. that. First, I'll hit uh, JB Weld for big or small repair projects at home or in the garage. You need something that lasts. We're proud to have JB Weld Epoxy Adhesive as our sponsor. We love these guys. We see them at SEMA. They gave me a box of goodies. I took them home and I used them, man. JB Weld. Put them in your toolbox, your kitchen drawer, craft room. Good for metal, wood, plastic, and more. Made in the U.S. of A. Pros and DIYers have trusted JB Weld for more than 50 years. We use it at home, we use it in the garage, we use it in our studios, and we use it in the shop. All our guys use JB Weld. I've always used this stuff, and now they make everything. So you don't have to go to a different brand. You go with JB Weld. It's available at jbweld.com, Home Depot, Lowe's, AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts, O'Reilly, Walmart, Amazon, and more. JB Weld, world's strongest bond. All right. Yeah. What do you got? So a, a base Explorer starts at thirty two thousand seven sixty five, and then now. So uh, here's the thing with me. Yeah. The I I looked at some Explorers when I, you know 
I don't know, five, eight years ago or something when I was looking at getting Lynette a new car. And I kind of mm-hmm. liked the idea of the Ford and the Explorer. And now it's when, a three row vehicle. When I found out it was a front wheel drive, I was like, shine this noise. Okay, yeah. This is not, I'm not going to buy a front wheel drive SUV. And I've had it. We had the Volvo front wheel drive SUV for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you pull up to the corner and it's like, oh, we got to get going. We're merging with traffic and there'd be a little water on the ground <laughs> and the car would lurch back and the front wheel would just spin in the water. Yeah. It's, it's stupid. Yeah. So now they've gone to rear wheel or all wheel. Yeah. God and, bless. And I drove them both and I'm all in on the all wheel drive. So it starts at 32,000 and change. You can get a nicely packaged XLT for 36000 and change. The limited is forty eight. You can get a fully loaded Platinum Edition for about 60000 Now, when you want to jump to the Aviator, right? But still, what do you – yeah, sorry. Go it ahead. goes up to about ninety six. And what do you get from L- L- Range Rover for sixty grand? Yeah, I don't know. A Discovery Sport? You don't get much. You get an Evoke. Yeah, I'm just saying. Like, I, I, yeah. I, I, you get I, like a loaded Evoke, but it's the size of a, of a Ford Escape. Yeah, it's like forget about the badging. I want something that's got all the all the stuff for that price. Yeah, now you're getting you're getting the the, the Ford Copilot. The 360 has all the safety features. Well, we're, get, we're now we're getting and, back to the Infinity versus the BMW. Yeah, you just when you're Range Rover, you, you're coasting a little on your nameplate, right? Yeah. Yeah, you are. Now, let me tell you about the ST. This is a seven-passenger SUV, three-row, and I keep talking to the guys. He's like, no, no, the ST's fun driving around. So I took this out all up through the canyons, went through an alpaca farm, and <laughs> and I uh, got photos with alpacas. The ST has all the blacked-out trim. It's got uh, It's got the bigger brakes on it. It's got the 400 horsepower. It's not meant to be like an X5M or like a, a Range Rover SVR, 550 horsepower, but it's meant to be. You know what the, the competitor is? Is a Dodge Durango SRT. You know what? I don't get – there's a market – that I don't get. I'll, I get it's a cool piece of machinery, but the BMW X M five, like super truckster, supercar truck, yeah, you know, with sixty five eighty something like that, with like the twenty two inch rims and the thirty series tires <laughs> and stuff. It's like that just looks like a big pile of bad mileage to me. This is, it looks yeah. like bad mileage. Mixed with, I can't run over a pothole without dinging the rim. Mixed with, this car cost a ton of money and the resale isn't that great. And it's like, it, I just feel like it'd be a pain in the ass yeah. to get in that car and drive around every day. It's a, it's all kind of, hey, neighbors, look how good I'm doing. But it's it, yeah. the practical application of like the super truckster. It's just dumb to me. Yeah. Well, first, look up a 2020 Ford Explorer ST and, uh, and look how sharp this thing is. 21-inch wheels, 400 horsepower. And I talked to the guys, and they kept saying track, 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 track. I'm like, you know it's a seven-passenger SUV. And they're like, they're like all you got to do is swap the brake pads to track pads, and this thing hauls ass. <laughs> and And I keep thinking back, you know, like when you go to – like the Bondurant school, any of the schools, and they got to do the lap with the class of seven people, and they're in like a van, and they're hauling yeah. ass. Like, this is the new version of that. This thing, it's it looks, doesn't it look as European as any anything else out yeah. there? Yeah, everything's good. Right? Everything looks good. Everything works. Everything's everything. And now my feeling is just like, get over the nameplate and drive Drive the Ford versus the BMW or the Audi. And this is this is that size of SUV we were talking about before, the three-row that's like the 198.8, whatever, 199 inches. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, like a 200-inch yeah, yeah. vehicle. And anyway, it was, it was fun to drive. I, I towed a trailer with one of them. I drove the hybrid one. I took it off-road. I drove all through the canyons and then took it to the city and, and you know, drove it all up, up there and then went up to some – some mansion in some park and drove over some sidewalks and some curbs just to get some photos. <laughs> and uh, everything worked. The, it was uh, good. It's got a turbo, twin turbo V6 in it. Yeah. The three liter. It's So you can mm-hmm. get the 2.3 liter, 300 horsepower, or you get the three liter EcoBoost in the... In the uh, in the limited or the platinum, it's three sixty five horse, but in the ST, it's four hundred horsepower, 
What's interesting is the hybrid version has a 3.3 liter naturally aspirated V6 coupled with the electric motor. Hmm. And that has a total of 318 horsepower. But the electric motor is very interesting. So imagine a, a, an automatic transmission. It's coming off the back of the motor. There's a torque converter. Then behind the torque converter is a clutch pack. And then there's electric motor. So the gas engine uses the automatic transmission with the torque converter, and the electric motor uses clutches to slip in and out mm. seamlessly. So um, it's kind of interesting. And it's all packaged in one transmission. We have uh, the Daytona, which I Bill told me to get in at some point. Yeah. We won't have that. We don't need that video. But uh, I was in. It's the second example produced, and it's first with the Italian body. Oh, sorry. Italian. I don't know yeah, Italian is. body. And um, I think it won its class at Le Mans. Or one day, oh, let's see. Uh, yeah, that. it scored a debut class win in 64 at 24 hours at Le Mans. So this is a – look, I, I've said to people, and I've said to people a million times, uh, they're like uh, seven of these cars, and they're like 34 Ferrari GTOs. And yeah. these cars whooped up. These cars beat the GTOs, and if a GTO is seventy million bucks, I don't know why this car is eighteen million bucks. You feel me? Yeah, these are the cooler looking ones. <laughs> and it's it's got. Uh, I'll tell you why. I told, I told the guy. I told Larry Larry Miller's his name who runs the thing. I said oh. the reason a GTO is seventy million bucks and this is forty million bucks is because this car has push rods. Yeah. And this car also has a transverse leaf spring across mm-hmm. the front, the suspension, like the Corvette. I yeah, guess the yeah, Corvette yeah, Corvette. Had that. yeah, it has a right to left uh, uh, from one front wheel to the next front wheel has a like a leaf spring. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, that's inverted. You feeling me? Yeah. I didn't know it had that. All right. But we'll uh, we'll play the, the clip of, of uh, Larry firing it up. So. Yeah. Sorry, this is Bill Miller. Oh, Bill, sorry. Larry Miller's car. God, that sounds good. Oh, my gosh. Now I'm even more upset we didn't have that clip. (laughs) Aren't you upset we don't have that clip? (laughs) Yeah, sweet, Matt. Thanks. (laughs) Because that sounded awesome. It did sound great. Oh, my God. Fire it up inside is badass. Play it one more time. (laughs) When he throws those revs, and imagine that's just an open header coming out of the side. I can see you sticking your fingers in your ears at one point going, man, that thing's loud. It's indoors. Here we go. One more time. God, that sounds good. That is the real McCoy, man. That's the best part of his job. He's like, cold oil, float the valves. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> I also uh, am getting the uh, GT40 Mark One too. We started that one up, so we'll play that one in a second. All right. Let me tell you guys a little bit about Geico while you're looking that up. Everybody's got a to-do list. You drop off dry cleaning, you pick up some milk, and now you can add safe hundreds of dollars on car insurance to that list. You don't have to drop off or pick up anything. Just go to Geico.com, and in 15 minutes, you could be saving 15% or more on car insurance. So if you want some extra money in your pocket, this is the most rewarding to-do you can do today. Check out Geico.com. Yeah, the other one's the Mark 1 P103. It's the oldest existing GT40, the first GT40 to win a race. And they got that one, too, man. They got everything. And the thing that's crazy, too, is there's probably 25, 30 people wandering around the museum when he fired this stuff up. And we'll play it now. What is the GT40? And they're both the same motor. Oh, is that a blue interior? Is that a blue yeah. seat? Mm-hmm. They're, they're the same motor. People can dispute me on this, but I'm assuming they're both 289s. They're both... Uh, downdraft Weber setups. So what's different on these motors is the exhaust, the bundle of snakes. I mean, they're in a different position in the car, but that shouldn't change the sound. 
But the GT40... It's all the exhaust. The front engine Daytona, I think, just has the split side exhaust. The front engine... I don't even know if it has a yes. crossover pipe. Of the front side. engine Daytona, when you look at it, and maybe Max Zapata has some pictures, or maybe we'll just put it up when you go to... Check out this show. Go to carcastshow.com and we'll have yeah, we'll bits and pictures stuff, and yeah. stuff like that. But the, the, <laughs> the, the headers on the Daytona look sort of cheaply made yeah. and crudely made. And they're not tuned headers. Like, you know, right. when they have There's nothing unequal, equal length. Yeah. Everything just sort of – if you look at them and, and Max and, Pata and pulls no up crossover pipe. and goes down – sorry if you can – it, they just look like somebody took one inch tubing and just kind of shaped them to just literally to. They're not stepped in any way. It's really, it's you're right. It couldn't look any cheaper than that. Except they have it split the two and the two. Ah, it's weird. They're looking. It looks like they're literally just trying to plumb the exhaust out of the car, not tune the exhaust. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they both just come out of the side of the car. They're thin. They're a little yeah. rinky-dink looking. You can see... They're, they're can, actually fairly equal length if you look at where they yes. use the collector. You can see this. You can see the 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 spring. Sorry, not the spring. The uh, leaf spring yeah. in the front, too, yeah. by yes. the front yes. wheel. Yeah, see it there. Yeah, so it's a really interesting... And, and a lot of the stuff is like pretty crude. Yeah. For, you know, mid-60s, early 60s. Anyway, we'll fire up. It's the, just got uh, a wrench hanging on. Fire up the GT40 <laughs> monkey wrench. Up there. So it's the same motor. They could never get the the <laughs> Webers to work with the big block, but this isn't a big block, and this has the Weber set, the downdraft Webers. Yeah, and this Sorry. is the cool exhaust. Mm-hmm. Imagine that going all day oh my God. for 24 hours Jeez. at Lama. That's fantastic. That's the oldest GT40 in existence, everybody. Brought to you by Chris Maxipata. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they got Castrol Edge in that bad boy. Stronger mm-hmm. under pressure. Engines can lose up to 10% of performance due to friction. Castrol Edge with fluid titanium transforms under pressure. Keep the metal parts from rubbing and robbing, man. Rubbing may be racing, but not inside the engine. Yeah. Three times. Three times, fool. <laughs> wow. So urban of you. <laughs> Three times stronger and leading full synthetic against viscosity breakdown. Castrol edge, everybody. Yeah, man, that is uh, It was a treat that they fired up all the stuff. I, in Denver, where is the museum? It's in Boulder. In Boulder. It's a Boulder is, we were outside of Denver, so it's a little bit, I don't know, Boulder's a 30-minute drive outside of Denver, something like that. We, right. were, we were staying outside of Denver, so we didn't leave Denver. I don't know, it took us 35, 40 minutes to get there. And by the way, when you drive out in that neck of the woods, you don't mind the drive. Here you drive, you're driving over homeless people and there's graffiti yeah. and gangbangers <laughs> everywhere and yeah. trash and oh. garbage there. It's, it's majestic. You're looking at the mountains. So, and that brings up a point is, is we were test driving explorers in, in Oregon outside of, of Portland and then even in Portland. And I don't know what it is, but the roads there were fantastic. And I came home and I drove right here to the studio and what a shit show the 405 was. Just, sure. just bumps and, and all kinds like, out there, this is why Ford goes, hey, come out here. Come outside of Portland <laughs> yeah, in the mountains to test drive the car. You're like, it's so smooth. It's so great. You realize that's why because the roads de- were amazing. <laughs> I got depressed as soon as we landed in Burbank. I was, I was immediately depressed. <laughs> Taking that strip of five from like oh, from Sun Valley back to here. It's really. That road's a disaster. It's a disaster. I don't, I don't know if there's anybody in charge of anything here, but there's a strip of the five freeway that goes to the Burbank Airport that's damnation alley. It's just, it's a fucking shit show and a mess. And I don't know, I, I've said many times, like, who's in charge of this area? Yeah. And like, if, if you, in fact, you are in charge of this strip of highway, what, what gives? What goes on? It, How many years can it just be a shit show? It's like five miles, like from here toward Burbank and Sun Valley, and it's just the worst. It's the worst strip of road ever. 
It's just big rig trucks and rock quarry trucks and, and it's, it's terrible. The, it's a great it's thing. almost dangerous. You can't even stay right. in your own lane. It no, because you, you can't see can't, the lines no. or anything. I know. <laughs> all faded away. It's always great too. And they're like, We gotta we gotta put so we gotta put a tax on gas so we can fix the I was like Okay. Now yeah. I'm gonna get depressed. But anyway, <laughs> this is the, the the museum is great. Go out there and visit it. It's cool. And I will say this. These guys, so Bill, Bill, Bill Murray. sorry, Bill Murray curates the museum and fixes the cars, restores the cars, and would race the cars. Um, Larry Miller owns many of the cars. He's not there. Um, the difference between museums where guys race the cars and use the cars they're not uptight about you sitting in them or getting in them or opening the door and slamming the door yeah. or p- putting your beer on the roof because right. they, they take them to the track and they race yeah. them. So, of course. I mean, don't do that if you go to the museum. Ask first. but <laughs> Right. So they just get – they go, oh, just get in or oh, help undo the hood and they pull the hood up or whatever. Yeah. And I do the same. Like I got a 935. My stupid friends come over and they bring their kids and their kids just like jump into the climbing car and start staring, car. climbing in and out. And I don't <laughs> care. Because if I'm going to go race it, then I'd be weird to go, don't touch it, you know, because we're going to go out and get it messy on the track. You know what I mean? There's going to be rocks and chips and who knows what, you know what I mean? So the difference between a museum where everything is just like from some collection and that you can't touch it and you can't open the door and you can't sit in it versus, and that might be, that might be a $150,000 Cadillac. These are forty million dollar cars, and they'll just kick the door open and tell you to jump in. <laughs> so, because they're race cars and because they use them. Yeah. All right. What are we covered here, uh, Max Pana? I hope so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, look what you can do when you put uh, put your mind to it. Yeah. That didn't but take. Look what too I can long. do when I put your mind to it. My there mind to it. That was All fun. Right. Yeah. All right, those that's, videos are great. That's oh killer, God. right? That what a great place. Could you tell the difference? I I could tell the sound you difference can. between yeah. the two. Yeah, yeah. And we will um, we'll sweeten it up a little bit too because we have a mix of both the camera mic and your lavalier mics and things like that. Yeah, so we'll yeah. make sure we get the right sound. Yeah, fix that. Yeah. So go to uh, <laughs> carcastshow dot com and, and 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 check out once in a lifetime cars and and Max Pata walked all around them, shot them all out. We got the full story with Bill. Um, I love it's Bill Murray and Larry Miller. I know it's <laughs> funny. August can can get over that. No, I'm immediately over it because they're both very common names. Yeah. And they're yeah. both old enough guys. There were every third guy was named Bill, who's over yeah, sixty. Yeah. You know, Just, and, and or Larry. Like if that guy fired up the car with his cigarette in his mouth the whole time, I would have not blinked an eye. It was awesome. They were a super nice guy. Super would tell you what the cars were worth. Would tell you any any stories, anything. You yeah, know, wasn't yeah. playing it close to the vest. So check that out. It's once in a lifetime. And uh, I'm going to be at Helium Comedy Club in Portland. I'll be July 19th and 20th. So it's beautiful there. Hi. You're going to love it. I do love it. <laughs> you go to amcrawl.com for all the live shows and uh, check out my stand-up special, Not Taco Bell material, and Chassis. And we got all our racing shows there. And check out Shift and Steer, yeah, available on iTunes and Podcast One. You got anything, uh, I'm, Matt? I'm going to say this. You have a show coming up in Monterey, August 17th. That's during car week. So get tickets to the track, come out and say hi on Saturday, then go to that show. That night? Yeah. That's right. I'll do it with my fire suit. So <laughs> until next time, Adam Crow for Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea saying, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit carcastshow.com.